but I think he did it. I can't answer all these questions. Your Honor, if I could have a moment with my client. Look at me, I'm a lawyer. The defense rests. Hi, I'm Lucy Lang. Lucy is a former prosecutor for the Manhattan DA's office and the current director of the Institute for Innovation and Prosecution at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Today, I'll be breaking down more clips from film and TV about the courtroom. Gag order, damages. Ms. Walling's personal emails detailing affairs she had with Wall Street executives were included in the leak. Yes, correct. Jesus Christ. Call Judge Gerhardt on a schedule a hearing. Ms. Hughes should be sanctioned and barred from speaking to the press. There are various strategies that lawyers use to try to influence a jury or a judge outside of the four corners of the record of a trial. Her television appearance was a calculated and unfounded attack on my client's reputation. I was simply answering questions. It was a wide-ranging interview. You called my client a rapist. You can understand why the judge would be concerned about that leaking into the jury's impartiality. I don't want this thing tried in the press. I'm issuing a gag order. There will be no discussion of this case over the airwaves, in print, online, anywhere. A jury is not permitted to be influenced by outside inputs, including the media. No judge should want a case to be tried in the press. This is similar to what a lawyer might do in the courtroom when they say something that they know is not permissible and the judge will strike from the record. But the lawyer also knows that once the jury has heard it, even if they're told to disregard it, it'll be in the back of their mind. I resent that. So do I. The gag order stands. Catching a witness in a lie, Chicago Justice. I'd like to call your attention to the afternoon of July 11th. Were you in the Inglewood neighborhood that day? Could be. Specifically at the home of your cousin, a boy named Andre Williams. I don't remember. But you do remember changing into some of Andre's clothes around that time, right? <laughs> He's little older than me. But you do remember being there now. I can't answer all these questions. Every witness who takes a stand in a criminal case is under oath, which means they're obligated to tell the truth. Do I got a choice? It's not uncommon in real life, like in this clip, for a witness to respond repeatedly by saying, I don't know, or I don't recall. I don't remember. I can't say for sure. Judge, I'd like to show the witness what's being offered as People's Exhibit 1. All right. You ever seen that particular gun before? Nope. With permission from the court, a lawyer can give things that are in evidence to a witness on the stand and ask them to demonstrate. However, in the case of a firearm, as a general matter, it would be given to a courtroom bailiff who would be asked to make sure that it was unloaded. You wanna make sure that thing's not loaded? In no circumstances would a witness on the stand be asked to do that. And what about the magazine? Clip's empty too. Now the magazine release on this gun, it's inoperable. But you knew that because this is your gun. That's a pretty slick move from this lawyer. That's why you had to smack the handle a few times to get the mag to release. Just like you did four months ago when you loaded this same gun, opened fire on a group of gang rivals, killing a 10-year-old girl in the process. Man, you making all this up. Even if a witness were caught in a lie, the lawyer would ultimately save that point for their summation rather than make that point during the examination of the witness. You know what? I'm out of here. The people move to dismiss all charges against Chris Stackhouse. It's not permissible for a witness at their own discretion to just get up and walk off the stand. Arrest this man for the murder of Laura Haley. I've never seen it happen that in the course of a trial, a lawyer moves in front of everyone in the courtroom to have someone on the stand arrested for new crimes. Sometimes you have to make a wrong turn before you find your way. Hostile witness, Law & Order SVU. I don't want to do this. Permission to treat the witness as hostile, Your Honor? Permission granted. Proceed. You must answer the questions, Ms. Harper. When a lawyer's own witness isn't responding to questions, the judge can grant that lawyer permission to treat the witness as hostile. That means the lawyer has been given permission to ask leading questions of the witness, as you would on cross-examination. You heard the defendant's voice in your house. You said you heard his voice in your house. That's why you're hesitant to identify him now, because if you were wrong then, you might be wrong again now. Leading questions, though, have to be in the form of a question. If Sean was there, then that would mean... That means he killed her. Is that what you were about to say? Objection! Let me rephrase. So this lawyer, who's repeatedly making speculative statements... That means he killed her. Is that what you were about to say? ...is entitled to make those kind of inquiries, but they have to be done in the form of a question. Is there a question anywhere here? Such as, isn't it right that if he killed her, then you killed her? Question mark. Role reversal. Ghostbusters 2. So you were just trying to help out a help out a friend who was frightened, who was scared of what was to her no when you're scared. Intent. Objection. There was no evil intent. There was no evil intent. And no Objection. What is the witness doing here? The lawyer should always be the one asking the questions. 
where the person on the stand is feeding the questions or commentary to the witness, the opposing counsel should definitely object. Objection, Your Honor. And the objection should be sustained. Sustained. Witness preparation. Seinfeld. On the afternoon of September 10th, you received a phone call, did you not? Phone call? <laughs> yes, a phone call! From who? From me! From you? Yes, from me! From me! I called you, remember? Lawyers are permitted to prepare their witnesses before trial, and in fact, it's a best practice to give your witness adequate preparation. What's the matter with you, you jerk? We had it all worked out! It's endlessly surprising to me, though, that no matter how many times you prepare a witness, there's no accounting for what someone remembers or says in the moment. What was the question? That said, I think that Newman's reaction is a little bit over the top. Your Honor, Mr. Kramer is obviously very distraught. I'm Mr. distraught. Shut up. Admissions on the stand from Mad TV. The defendant is a flight risk, Your Honor. If I was a flight risk, I wouldn't even be here. I could be in another country this afternoon if I wanted to. I got friends who can create false passports. One of the reasons that people who are charged with crimes are discouraged from speaking in court is because anything they say on the record can be used against them. Careful, Mr. Henry. Right now, you're only being charged with armed robbery. Even if it is an acknowledgment of other uncharged crimes. I don't need the money. I'm a drug dealer. Like here. <laughs> <laughs> motion to dismiss, Aaron Brockovich. And I have here 84 motions to strike. In both civil and criminal matters, the parties have an opportunity to file a motion to dismiss on the grounds that the complaint itself is legally inadequate. It is the order of this court that each of the 84 motions to strike and demurs are denied. Once a motion to dismiss has been denied, negotiations often start in earnest. $20 million is more money than these people have ever dreamed of. Oh, see, now that pissed me off. First of all, since the demur, we have more than 400 plaintiffs in. Let's be honest, we all know there are more out there. $20 million isn't shit when you split it between them. Aaron. Before you come back here with another lame-ass offer, I want you to think real hard about what your spine is worth, Mr. Walker. Or what you might expect someone to pay you for your uterus, Miss Sanchez. The majority of civil cases don't go to trial. Often they are resolved after negotiations with a plea so that everyone can cut their losses and go home rather than risk the very high stakes of a trial and ultimately a much greater settlement. Take out your calculator and you multiply that number by 100. Anything less than that is a waste of our time. Throwing the book at someone from Crime Story. They probably planted it, uh, investigating Taglia's link to the KGB. KGB? Well, it's strictly speculation, but word on the street is that Taglia is selling nuclear uh, secrets to the Russians. I mean, I don't know how true it is, but... The... Your Honor, the man's a liar. That is a complete lie! Your Honor, do I have to suffer these indignities right here in the halls of justice? The actor playing the lawyer is actually my dad. We still got a trial, remember? A lawyer is permitted to refer to a witness lying, but not to call a witness a liar. Your Honor, the man's a liar. If a lawyer were to actually throw a book or anything else at a witness... That is a complete lie! They would likely be held in contempt. And if a witness were to throw anything back at a lawyer or anyone else in the courtroom, proceedings would likely stop. Court adjourned. Thank you, Your Honor. Mandatory sentencing for the people. This is happening all over the country. Low-level, non-violent crimes that trigger disproportionate mandatory minimum sentences. And I'm part of the problem. What is unusual is that the judge, while he's pronouncing the sentence, is speaking out in opposition to it. My hands are reluctantly and unwillingly tied in this situation. This judge in For the People is reflecting a sentiment that is increasingly part of the criminal justice reform movement in this country, which is that mandatory minimum sentencing is an outdated approach to crime. I have no choice but to sentence you, Mr. Puente, to 10 years in federal prison. Reasonable doubt, the practice. You know that 90-something percent of all defendants are guilty? Think about it. By the time they get to trial, they've been judged guilty many times. A lawyer is not permitted to offer statistics that are not in evidence. Closing statements are reserved for the facts and evidence and the law. I think he's guilty. But in this country, we don't take away a man's freedom on the possibility of guilt. You have to find guilt beyond all reasonable doubt. While the lawyer is right, 
that if the jury has any doubt, they must acquit because his client is presumed innocent, it is bad practice for him to bring in his own perspective on his client's guilt or innocence. I'm sure as hell not supposed to say that, but I think he did it. Courtroom conduct, Kramer versus Kramer. We were married a year before the baby, and then seven years after that. So, you were a failure at the one most important relationship in your life. Objects. Overruled. The witness's opinion on this is relevant. It might be appropriate to ask a witness whether, in their own view, something had been a failure. I was not a failure. Oh? What do you call it then? A success? The marriage ended in divorce. I think that this rather nasty line of inquiry is unfair. The question about a relationship being a failure is kind of a subjective one. Were you a failure? And it's not clear exactly why her view of who failed is what matters here. I consider it less my failure than his. Probably the line of inquiry would have been stopped earlier when it became clear that there was a difference of opinion about what it meant for the relationship to have been a failure. Where are you? Her ex-husband in the courtroom trying to convey something subtly to her might sway her answer and a judge, if they noticed it, might respond by stopping their uh, subtle communication. Custody hearings, big little lies. I just want you to know how sorry I am that it's come to this. There's nothing preventing opposing parties from speaking to each other off the record during a custody hearing. But at the end of the day, we are still family. Of course, they should bear in mind that things that are said can be used by one party against the other. This is awfully different from when we last saw Meryl Streep in a custody hearing in Kramer versus Kramer probably 30 years ago. And in that case, too, she was communicating with someone off the record. We're not family, Mary Louise. Irrelevant evidence, South Park. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Chewbacca. Chewbacca is a Wookiee from the planet Kishik. He's using the Chewbacca defense. Why would a Wookiee, an eight foot tall Wookiee, want to live on Endor with a bunch of two foot tall Ewoks? That does not make sense. But more importantly, you have to ask yourself, what does this have to do with this case? Nothing. Objection on the ground of relevance. The evidence about Chewbacca here is entirely irrelevant. If Chewbacca lives on Endor, you must acquit. All evidence that is admitted at trial must be relevant. Look at me, I'm a lawyer defending a major record company and I'm talking about Chewbacca. Does that make sense? If at the time it's offered, it is not yet relevant, it can be admitted subject to connection. And if Chewbacca for some reason later in the trial became relevant. Why am I talking about Chewbacca when a man's life is on the line? It could at that time be introduced, even though he had already displayed it and offered it subject to later connection. The defense rests. Okay then. Wow, he's good. Representing yourself, Fracture. Mr. Crawford, you have been charged with section 664 slash 187 of the California Penal Code, attempted murder. And do you wish to enter a plea at this time? It's not guilty, but I also want to waive my right to counsel and represent myself. In order for someone to be permitted to represent themselves, they'll be questioned about whether or not they're doing so knowingly. Be aware that lack of counsel will not be grounds for an appeal. Oh, I understand. Whether they understand the extent to which they're giving up the expertise of an attorney. Your Honor, if I could have a moment with my client. I'm not your client trying to keep up with you. And generally speaking, they will be assigned backup counsel to assist and answer questions as they proceed with their own defense. Mr. Crawford, you want to reconsider? Absolutely not. It's going to turn into a circus. I appreciate your concern with the dignity of the court, 007. It could be argued that the courtroom is one of the last bastions of formality in modern American life. But even there, a coat and tails is a little bit too much. However, I was surprised to hear the judge refer to the DA as 007. 007. Usually that kind of joking commentary is reserved for off the record. District Attorney's Office will assign another prosecutor. No, I like Mr. Beecham. While the defendant here has an absolute right to represent himself, he doesn't have the right to choose who the prosecutor is on his case. He likes you. Personal digs, Boston Legal. What better to satiate some pre-election hunger pangs than a belly full of media attention? Mr. District Attorney, my name appears second on the ballot this November. Ginsburg knows that. That's why he's handling this case personally. Ouch. Closing statements are reserved for the facts and the law. Outside politics have no place in either party's closing statements. He was starving. 
When was the last time you starved? How about you? I know you're not starving except for attention. All of this lawyer's inquiry about collateral issues, like whether the jurors themselves have starved and what the status of the district attorney's future election is, are entirely impermissible in court. And the opposing counsel should have been on his feet objecting, and the judge should have been sustaining all those objections. It makes for great TV, but it's not realistic. Tampering with the evidence, Chicago. Ms. Kelly, do you know the meaning of the word perjury? Yes, I do. You also know that it's a crime? Yes. If it turns out that you knew that this diary was a fake, I hate to think of you rotting away in prison for the next 10 years. All I know is what I was told. The lawyer is trying to accuse the other lawyer of having tampered with the evidence. But you're not suggesting that I tampered with evidence, are you? No, 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 no. no. Utterly absurd. But now that you mention it, who obviously had a sample of my client's handwriting, Mr. Harrison, didn't you ask Roxy, to write out a confession for you? Your Honor, this is outrageous. It's outrageous! Save it for summation, Richard Gere. The appropriate way to do that would be for him to elicit the relevant facts from witnesses on the stand. Any idea who this mysterious benefactor might be? No. Introduce the relevant material evidence into evidence, and then on summation, explain his theory to the jury. Not to do it while there's a witness on the stand. The defense rests! Summation, The People versus Larry Flint. I'm not trying to convince you that you should like what Larry Flint does. I, I don't like what Larry Flint does, but what I do like is that I live in a country where you and I can make that decision for ourselves. But then ask yourselves if you want to make that decision for the rest of us, because the freedom that everyone in this room enjoys... Objection. Up until this point, Edward Norton is totally appropriately talking to the jury about the context of the case. We live in a free country. You and I can make that decision for ourselves. But once he starts suggesting that the jury should have a role in setting policy for everyone and thinking about how this plays into the future of the country. Ask yourselves if you want to make that decision for the rest of us. He's stepping beyond the bounds of an appropriate closing statement. That's not freedom. The American legal system is incredibly complex, and no TV show or movie gets it exactly right. That said, it's a lot of fun to watch them try.